Okay, I think we have it. Good morning. Tim, how are you? Hey, Alex. Good morning. Hey, everybody. I am Alice Keeler. I am here at the Inedco conference. We are going to have Coffee EDU here in about 30 minutes. So that's why we're doing this broadcast so early. If you don't know what Coffee EDU is, it is a one hour unconference meetup where you can talk about anything that you want. And the rules are it is exactly one hour to the minute. So I will cut you off when the time is up just to allow people who need to get somewhere else to go. But of course, people can stick around and talk. So I expect to have people filtering in and coming in, joining this morning since it's 730 here in Colorado and the Coffee EDU starts at eight. So if people are coming on by. Uh, we'll just give them a wave. But I am here this morning with my friend Tim, who is from Merlin Mind. Merlin, or you're not Merlin. <laughs> hey, Merlin. It, I have some coffee. This is pre coffee uh, session. So let's see how I get through this. So, Tim, you want to tell me a little about yourself? Yes, yes. Good morning, Alice. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is, is Tim Hawkinson. I'm, uh, I'm in New York right now, hanging out. Uh, getting ready to do some uh, some work uh, on the road, but um, I've been an educator. I was an elementary school teacher and middle school teacher, and then got into uh, ed tech training and curriculum. And uh, I've always been just interested in what's the what's the next best thing in ed tech. So very happy to be with with Merlin, uh, the first of its kind of digital assistant for classrooms, which we're going to talk about today. Um, That's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I'm going to start with the end because sometimes people start with the, they can't stay for the whole time, even though we're only going to do this for like 20 minutes. There is a special. So if you want to email Tim, you'll be able to get a 50% discount. This is the June special. So it does, in theory, expire at the end of the month. So even though you don't know what it is yet, I would encourage you to scan the QR code, which takes you to a Google form. Um, actually, that one might take you to Tim's email, one or the other. Uh, we do have a Google form for you to fill out for you to win $50 in classroom supplies. And it's just your name and your email. That's all you have to put in there. And you'll automatically be entered to win. Uh, courtesy of Tim, he is supplying this. And he would love to give you some more information about how to get yourself a Merlin, especially at the discounted price. So there's his email on there, and you can see that Merlin.org is the website if you want to check out more about Merlin or ask me or Tim if you see us anywhere or hit us up on socials. All right, so I'm just going to leave that there for a second, let people scan it, and then we'll get going on that. And again, it's just your name and your email, so it's going to be a real quick fill out, enter to win $50 for classroom supplies, and... I should have put the link in the form. All right, so I was going to start off by sharing about my experience with Merlin. I borrowed from the Promethean booth. They have a Merlin in their booth, um, so I borrowed the remote for the, for the device. So I was at a conference, and I was doing a presentation. And after my presentation, a woman came up to me and just said, Hey, Alice, I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, I'd love for you to see this project that I'm working on. So she takes me over to show me Merlin, and it's like instantly I get it. Now, if you know anything about me, I am the most passionate about, I know you think it's Google, but it's not. It is student-centered classrooms. Like that is my passion in life is I want to like get rid of the front of the room. I've been saying this for years. Like I want to sit next to students. That's what I want to spend my day. I didn't get into teaching because I love spending time with paperwork and I love spending time with my computer and like trying to bash the thing to make it work for me instead of with me. And I think a lot of us feel this pain point that we're constantly running to the front of the room to do something on our computer, which is, and then I'm like, okay, I want to go to the back of the room and work with students, but I know in a minute I'm going to have to change my slides or to do something with my computer. And so then I'm running back up to the front and you're like, you know what, I might as well just stay up here. So when I see Merlin, what it does is, well, it's two things. There is the, let's see if I can go to the next slide. No, I can't go to the next slide using it on StreamYard. Again, I am pre-coffee. 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 This is a very dangerous situation, everyone. Very dangerous. So the, the, the Merlin itself, the Merlin Symphony, is a large speaker. And it hooks up via HDMI to whatever you have. You just need some sort of a projection device. It doesn't even have to be a flat panel or a Promethean board or a smart board or anything like that. 
but it definitely works with Promethean boards if you have one, um, but you don't have to have one, just some sort of projection with an HDMI. And then you can also use this remote that works with it. Is it Bluetooth or something? Yeah, Bluetooth remote. Bluetooth remote. And so you can actually just use it like you would use instead of Alexa, you say, hey, Merlin, and you can use your voice to control your computer. This allows you to be anywhere in the room or you can disable the Hey Merlin voice commands because, you know, sometimes we don't want kids just shouting that out in the middle of class. And so then you just use this remote where there is a microphone button. If I can get this angled on here, you just hold down the microphone button and you're going to, you don't even have to say Hey Merlin at that point and just ask it to do a variety of things. So I just, I hold down the button. I say, open Google drive, start presentation, open a new tab, go to tab two, uh, go to the slide 15, open link, start video, pause video. I mean, it's just like, to me, it's just so mind blowing. And like, the, I got to use it right away. And I don't need any training on this because I know how to do things on my computer. All I have to do is ask for what do I want it to do? And it's going to do it. So it's just a matter of like, okay, what, what do I wish it could do if I were to just verbally voice my computer, verbally boss my computer around? And it does, and, that, and I'm thinking, this is what I need. So when I'm, no matter where I'm at in the room, I'm going to be able to uh, control the computer and or have the students do it. But as students ask curiosity questions, I can say, you know, like Google search, the square root of 57, Google search, whatever students ask that we construct knowledge together instead of me being the source of knowledge, we look it up, we show research techniques, things like that. And I can just... Honestly, I could probably put my computer in the closet at this point, uh, so long as I'm able to hook it up with the HDMI cord and be somewhere in the room. And of course, I'd like students to use it. So as soon as I saw this, I'm like, I love this. And I and I literally begged Merlin, like, can I work with you guys? And so uh, I asked him this morning. I'm, I'm not getting paid for this. I just generally have a real passion for Merlin. So that is my story. So Tim, you want to fill in some of the blanks of what is Merlin Symphony? Yeah, yeah. So I did have my coffee. So we, you know, we're you know, at least I've I've got the the, the coffee fuel going. Um, but uh, Alice, kind of, you, you you did well mentioning kind of the kind of why why this exists, right? So the Symphony Classroom is the name of the actual hardware. It looks like a it looks like a sound bar. It's got a very high power, uh, high power speaker as well, uh, but we're all used to these devices sort of in our homes and in our cars and things like that. And you just sort of want to expect to be able to fluidly, you know, function around the classroom and, you know, using our voice or uh, whether calling out, hey, Merlin, or using the remote, which is fantastic, by the way, because it does a whole bunch of things. You know, it really does sort of, uh, it really does de-stress the environment from the teacher standpoint because of all the decisions you're making and, and pre-coffee especially all the decisions you're making and the frustrations with i've got to open this and you know the i know Al, Al, you're passionate passionate about the, the student-centered learning and wanting to be with students and as great as my computer is and as powerful as the you know some of these you know front room displays can be and they have a place during uh, you know, during, you know, purposeful times in the classroom, one of the things that, that happens is this. When I had to pause and I'm going to go ahead and touch, 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 and I got to open up, you know, I'm going to open up my bookmarks. It's a and, nice look of your back here. Uh... And, you're, and you're seeing my back. And now, you know, Alice, who, Alice, who, you know, I need to be spending you know, more time with it, 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 in that location. I mean, think about proximity and, and behavior management. Uh, you know, that, you know, I, I constantly am losing that, that, that connection. And even if it's just for a few seconds, we know that, you know, where attention spans, uh, you know, kids' attention spans have always been, you know, that it's a short window, but even, even now my attention span as an adult is, is, is nearly, <laughs> nearly, is nearly nothing. Oh, squirrel, uh, squirrel just ran by the room. But, yeah. um, you yeah, know, the whole idea is, can I, can I have a thought of what I want to do and just do it from where I am currently? And not have to not have to pause and, and interrupt. So, you know, the, yeah, the the whole idea of Merlin being able to do you know to do things in the moment. Um, you know, oftentimes I I don't have everything prepared. Or Can you maybe do a demo, Tim. Accidentally close the tab. Yeah. So uh, so what we'll do here is um, I'll actually just show. I I opened a bookmark, so I'll just use that 
very simple example of having to come up and, and yeah. open a bookmark. Uh, and this is, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this tab and I'm going to ask Merlin to do it. Close tab. And then let's go backwards in time. And now that, uh, let's say we're talking about ocean life and I want to open that bookmark, but I'm with a group. Open my deep sea bookmark. Which bookmark? Number one. Okay. So I actually have a couple of bookmarks that have that, that have that in it, and this is the one I wanted. So instead of having to move and come up to my computer in the front of the room, I'm now able to, to use that. Even better is with this remote, because it's not just a push to talk, I can also use the remote to scroll on the page. Okay. And I have an air mouse to interact. So again, from one spot in the moment where I am, I can open something and interact with it okay, from wherever I am uh, in the classroom. Okay. What do you think about that, Alice? Well, I love it. And I, and I love that it, even, even if I am sitting at my computer, like say I'm just teaching remotely. I mean, would I still want to use Merlin when I'm up next to my computer? I would, because how many clicks do you have to do? I find myself constantly fumbling around like, okay, oh, wait, I got to click on this. Oops, I clicked on the wrong thing. And I'm scrolling down like, where's this bookmark? And I'm just, it's sucking up so much time. I'm thinking it. I want my bookmark to Pear Deck. I want my bookmark to my website, my class, my Google Classroom page. I just want to open it. And so if I'm thinking it, I can just say it and it's just going to yeah. go there. So it just saves me a lot of time and stress and keep my focus on the lesson instead of keeping my focus on, okay, wait, where is this bookmark? Yeah. And even you know, in my little office studio here, of course, I'm right here and right? I can, I can turn and, and, and touch, but yeah, just by I can I can stay looking at the camera and I can and I can open things. So just think about you know, just even if even if you're teaching remotely, you, you have that ability to maintain eye contact and maintain focus on, right. on the students. Uh, one of the other things about you know this, this whole stressful is again pre coffee, uh, especially, but um, a lot of things going to the cloud. We're using Google Drive, OneDrive to store all of our content, and now you know. I'm not the best at filing into folders and, and, and naming things, but I do name, right. you know, name things with keywords. So uh, one of the nice things is whether it's in class and you're, and you're thinking, okay, we're going to do station. Let's bring, uh, I'm going to bring up my, uh, you know, the station list for today, uh, whether it's a file or a spreadsheet or a presentation, yeah. now, I can do that while multitasking, right? Let's say before, before class even starts, I'm going around and handing out, materials, prepping some, some materials in the classroom. And all right, let's see, what do I want to do? Um, open my Pythagorean theorem presentation. So Merlin will go ahead and go into my Google Drive and wherever it is, whether it's in a folder or, you know, recent Okay, so I didn't know you didn't have to start from Drive because I always do open Google Drive and then yeah. I say open my Pythagorean theorem presentation. You can just say open my Pythagorean theorem presentation. Yep, so Merlin is connected, uh, the account's connected into your Google Drive, so that's any, any items that are in your Google Drive, you can go, uh, go directly and ask. Uh, the, the whole idea is, if you, had, if you had an assistant sitting at the computer, what would, you ask, what would you ask the assistant to do? I would say, open my Pythagorean theorem presentation. The word presentation says, oh, it's a slides presentation. It's going to go in there and, and open that up. And then from here, when we're ready to present, students are coming in, start presentation. And now my clicker also conveniently yeah. uh, becomes a... So before you get any further there, we have a question yeah. from my friend Terry Lester in Kansas right. City. Yeah, uh, all right. He wants to know, what is the range of the remote? Like how close you have to be to the base unit? Yeah, so uh, where I first met you, Alice, at uh, FETC in uh, New Orleans, we were in that big, uh, the big conference hall. I stepped off about 72 feet. Uh, so uh, that was uh, much bigger than uh, than the general classroom would be. Uh, okay. here, any you know, forty to fifty feet is uh, is is extremely reliable. So anywhere anywhere in the classroom, that's pretty good. So we have Joel Holman here who wants to know. He says he has a little clicker that goes through the slides, but he thinks that your clicker, the Merlin, would take it to another level and be given the ability to move around for sure. So would you need to continue to have your you know, two devices with your clicker, or could you just go straight Merlin? You know, if you wanted to have like a, you know, like a belt with all of your tools, your clickers and pens <laughs> and things like that, that would be, you know, pretty cool. But 
this would replace the need to uh, to have uh, to have that that clicker. You wouldn't need two clickers uh, for using the the web. Uh, yeah, the, web. I don't know if it's just me, but the signal is cutting out a little bit, and it's probably because I'm at this conference and people are starting to show up. But the, it does have the clicker capabilities in there. It would completely replace your other clicker, right? Yep, no need, no need to have a second clicker using uh, using Google Slides or uh, Point Online. All right, Tim. If you, I'm going to go ahead and just really quickly go back to my slides, only because I feel like the internet is not being cooperative right now, <laughs> and I want to make sure I get to this information. I have some. Um, th things that you can prompt Merlin, and I'd love for you to continue to demonstrate those in a minute. Hey Merlin, what time is it? Hey Merlin, set a timer for five minutes. Change the volume, show my document camera. Um, send it to Google Classroom. To me, that's one of the most mind blowing is it just takes out all of these steps. Like how many steps is it for you to add something into a platform? And you can literally just ask Merlin to do it. So I have coming back to, um, yeah, this special offer. Just wanna put that back up on the screen really quick. If you would like to get one of these devices, it is on sale right now. So please reach out to Tim um, T. Hodgkinson at Merlin.org. And we have a Google form that if you fill it out, you'll be entered to win $50 uh, in supplies for your classroom using an Amazon gift card. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this back down and just spend the rest of the time, Tim, if you could demonstrate things that you can do with Merlin. And if anyone has any questions, please continue to put them down in the comments. Alice, you mentioned sharing to Google Classroom. So while you're talking, I brought up, a, I searched for a video on YouTube on the Pythagorean theorem. I wanted to share it with my I class. This link with your two five class. So in all of that time while I was listening to you, all I had to do was take a shareable resource and ask Merlin to send it to my class. It brought me to Google Classroom, asked me which class. I told, I said which, I said uh, number four, which was Algebra two, and the uh, Merlin did all the rest, created the post, and that uh, and she just confirmed with me that the link has been shared to Google Classroom. That's now in the class feed. So two steps, two commands versus uh, all of the you know, the stuff that you would normally need to do to share that. Super convenient. Alice, I know you love it. What other questions do you have for me? All right, hold on. I'm going to just put this back up there. So what? just give some of your favorite features that teachers are using Merlin for. Like what are they saying and how this saves them time or what they like about it? Yeah, they just very simply they feel like they don't have to they don't have to stop. They don't have to they don't have to stop to go to their computer. They don't feel like they're turning their back on students. Um, obviously if they're using Google Classroom, they love that feature. Uh, they love the ability to be able to use the mouse and uh, controlling video is a is a huge feature for them. Uh, we didn't really it's show mind blowing, really. Yeah. So think about the number of clicks and the Alice, you know how when you're playing a video and you and, and you you want to replay a piece, right? And then like, all right, let's watch that again. To come up and you know to come up and kind of mess with that slider and move it back. Full screen. I can give commands anything that I would have to stop and do. Play. Okay. And then I can just like you could on you know, on your TV at home, go to 44 seconds. Rewind 10 seconds. Go back to the beginning. Yeah. Maybe I'm 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 how much time do I spend scrubbing a video? It's ridiculous. And I can just like pause the video because what I want to do is I want to be out with my students. I want to say, pause the video. Let's turn and talk. What did you notice? What did you wonder? And then open a new tab. Let's Google search something based on something that they wondered about that. Let's go back to the other tab and continue the video. Rewind, fast forward, skip 10 seconds. I mean, just being able to do that with your voice. If you think it, you say it. How much time does that save? Yeah. Another thing is just, and you mentioned, uh, just modeling modeling the search process perhaps or uh, or confirming. You know, you talk about the square root. If you can type it into Google, you can ask. Okay. So search for the Pythagorean theorem. 
So if I use the if I use the word search, it's going to go to Google and it's going to give me search results, right? Um, what is the square root of 57? And so we can do instant, you know, instant con confirmation of, uh, you know, of, of tasks that we're working on, or, you know, you know, we're talking a lot about math here. I know you're passionate about math, but, you know, we can look, you know, anything we, we want to search, like while we're in the topic of a question, how deep is the Atlantic Ocean, right? So those topic, those questions in the moment we can ask and, and, and just get those results very quickly. Well, Tim, I appreciate you uh, joining me this morning. I know that you were leaving, and so this was our, like our only opportunity was pre-coffee, but it is now I'm glad time. We're still I'm glad we were ready so to go. Joining coffee ED is about to start here at Ined Cove. Anyone is at ISTE. I hope to see you Tuesday morning for Coffee EDU, and you're always welcome to start your own Coffee EDU. And please contact him for more information on how you can get a Merlin. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Somebody get Alice some coffee, please. <laughs> See you soon.